So let's go ahead and we're going to do conditional probability and independence. So there's actually a way to check to see if something is independent from each other. And these are going to be the way that we check to see if something is independent. So you can use either one of those. And if you use either one of those formulas, it should be able to tell us if something is independent or if it's not independent. So I'm going to go ahead and show you why this is actually a true statement. You're like kind of showing you the proof. So probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of the given. So if you kind of remember, when we did the multiplication rule, the multiplication rule said if we have independent events, that we could just multiply these two probabilities and that would give us the probability of A and B. So when we say probability of A and B for independent event, it's essentially saying probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace this with the probability of A times the probability of B divided by the probability of B. So if you actually go ahead and look at this, the probability of B would cancel out and you're just left with probability of A. So that why that statement is true because if we are assuming that the events are independent from each other, then you can just write probability of A and B as probability of A times probability of B and then the probability of B would cancel out. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna go ahead and just use some of these to check to see if they're independent. So right now we're gonna do this problem. So we have probability of M, which is 0.8. We have probability of N, which is 0.25. And we have probability of R, which is 0.6. So for part A, it says if the probability of, of M and N is equal to 0.20, are the event M and N independent from each other? So for this one, we're gonna be using this condition right here. So we're gonna say probability of M and N should equal to the probability of M multiplied by the probability of N. Any questions so far with that notation? So is it yes that they are independent? Well, we still haven't um, done the problem. Okay. Pretty much right now, you just wrote the notation. So I know- How do we determine which one to use? Or is it just for trial by error and we have to try all three? Well, it's kind of looking at what information is given. Because if you look at this one, like in order to use these two, you have to give us this information right here. The probability of A given B. And if you look at right here, they only give me the probability of M and N, and they give me these individual probability. So that's why we're using this condition right here. So you kind of depending on what's information given to us. All right. So if you look at the probability of M and N, that's equal to 0.20. If you look at the probability of N, that's equal to 0.80. And if you look at the probability of N, that's equal to 0.25. So the left side, you don't want to touch the left side. You just want to touch the right side. So you want to see what happens if you do 0.80 times 0.25. So if you do 0.80 times 0.25, you get 0.20. So since the left side matches with the right side, we're gonna say they're independent. So this is just to check and answer if it's like independent. 
Correct. So if I ask you, um, use the multiplication rule to check to see if they're independent. This is how you want to check to see if they're independent. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and do B. So for B, it says, if the probability of N and R is equal to 0.3, are the events N and R independent? So once again, we're going to say probability of N and R should be equal to the probability of N multiplied by the probability of R. So we already know this is equal to 0 0.3. 0.30. I already know probability of n is equal to 0.25. And I already know probability of r is equal to 0.6. So right now what I want to do, I want to multiply these two. So we want to do 0.25 multiply by 0.6 and you get 0.15. So then you want to check to see, does the left side match it up with the right side? So do both sides match up? No. No. So since they don't match up, we say even N and R are dependent. And that's it for part B. Any question in regard to part B? All right, so let's go down. So for this one, what we're gonna do, now we're gonna use a two-way table, and what we're gonna do, we're gonna be using these conditions to check to see if they're independent. So for this one, it says, are the event being female and liking Game of Thrones independent? So I want to see if you like in Game of Thrones depend on your gender. So we're trying to see if your male are more are male more likely to like Game of Thrones versus female. So this is going to tell me if they're independent. That means that it doesn't depend on your gender. There are other factors that go into whether you'll like Game of Thrones or not like Game of Thrones. But if it is dependent, dependent mean like it does depend on your gender. Your gender will specify if you're more likely to like it or less likely to like it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use our, uh, well, we're gonna use the formula to check to see if they're independent or dependent. Oops, do not wanna use a highlighter. So for this one, which one do you want to be the condition? Do you want female to be the condition? Or do you want the liking Game of Thrones to be the condition? And for this one, doesn't really matter which of the one you choose. So which one do you want to be? All right, female. Cool. So we'll put female here. And I'll put L for liking Game of Thrones. So going back to this formula I gave you, if you look at it, it says, well, let me erase this. Come on. If you look at this formula right here, if you look at it, we set it equal to the probability of A. So whatever is not the condition, that's what it should equal to. So for this one, it should equal to the probability that you'd like Game of Thrones. Any question why it should be that case? Cool. All right, so let's go ahead and find this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and find this probability. So if you look at the condition is that you're a female, so that means we're using this right here. So that means we're gonna divide it by 90. Then what you have to figure out, of those 90, how many of them like Game of Thrones? 60. So we do 60 divided by 90. Any question on how we got 60 divided by 90 for probably liking Game of Thrones given 
they're FEMA. All right, so let's find the probability that something just like Game of Thrones. So we use 123, because that's how many total people participated. And how many total people like Game of Thrones? hundred twenty-three. Oh wait, eighty-two. Cool, eighty-two, perfect. All right, so if they're independent from each other, that means these two numbers should, um, should be the same. If they're dependent from each other, that means they should be different from each other. So let's actually go ahead and look to see. So 60 divided by 90. So we pretty much just get 0.6666. And you keep on repeating. If we do 82 divided by 123, cool. so we get 0.666, and you keep on repeating. So in this case, it's telling you they're independent from each other. So that's telling me it doesn't depend on your gender, on whether you like Game of Thrones or not, because we already know 66% of the people like Game of Thrones. So it makes sense that 66% of the female will like Game of Thrones. All right. So that's it for that problem. So for this one, they're independent from each other. So you liking Game of Thrones does not depend on your gender. Any question for that last problem? All right, so we're going to do one more problem, and then we'll call it a day. All right, so for this one, we're going to do without replacement. So without replacement means the events are dependent from each other. So without replacement means that once you make a selection, you pretty much take away that um, object or that person out of the selection. So once you select it, you can't select or reselect that person again. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do this problem. So for this one, it says two marbles are drawn without replacement from an urn containing four red marble, five white marble, and two blue marble. So let's kind of draw this urn. Right. So we have four red marbles. Let's see how I'll do white marble. So we have five white marbles. And then we have two blue marble. So for this one, if you look at it, we're doing two selection because it says two marbles are drawn. So if you look at part A, we want the first one to be red, and the second one should be red too, because both of them are red. All right. Everybody good so far with those notation or the urn? All right, so let's go ahead and work this out. So what's the probability that the first marble I get is red? Or what's the fraction? Four over 11, four out of 11. Yeah, cool, four out of 11. All right, everybody good with that so far? All right, so here's where we're gonna chain, because if they're independent, independent mean for the second selection, the probability will still be the same. But for this one, since we're saying it's without replacement, so that means once I take the marble, pretty much I can't select that marble again. So it's kind of think about looking at the urn. I just took away one of the red marble. So now how many red marble do I have left? Three. Yeah. Over ten. Perfect. So for this one, we'll say four divided by 11. 
multiply by three divided by 10. And we'll say that's 10.91%. And that's it for A. Any question in regard to A? So let's do B. So for B, if you look at it, it says the first marble drawn is red and the second one is blue. So we already know the probability that the first one is red is four out of 11. So let's take away the red. So what would be the probability that we get a blue marble? Two out of ten. Two out of ten. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Don't wait. So you got four out of eleven times two out of ten. And you get point zero seven two seven. Or seven point twenty seven. All right, but that's it for B. Any question in regard to B? All right, so let's do C and then that will be it for today. All right, so for C it said the first marble drawn is blue and the second is red. So we'll say probably first one is blue, then the second one is red. So the probably the first one is blue should be two out of 11. And then the probability the second one is red should be four out of 10. And if you actually work this out, you should get the same percentage as part B. So for this one, are you saying it doesn't really matter the order? Because the percentage will still be the same. It doesn't matter if you want red, then blue, or blue, then red. For this one, you're saying the order really doesn't matter for this one. All right, but that's it for that part. Any question in regards to this last question? Cool. All right. So let me stop the recording.